There, I think we have sound now. Yes. Hello, and welcome to First United Methodist Church, Mason City, Iowa. It's October 21st, 2020. Yesterday was fun writing checks for 10 20, 2020. <laughs> and it's a cold day. It's also a cool day here in the sanctuary. The people to fix the heat situation will be here tomorrow, but we may not have heat for Sunday, so please dress warmly if you're coming to our Sunday service. It'll be like we're outside, except it will be inside. And we are. And you'll have to, you no longer have to listen to me talking about my eyes because you might notice I have glasses now with prisms that correct the double vision. So I'm only seeing one of Pastor Carol Cress out in the congregation and only one Gary and Larray back in the sound and visual booth. Appreciate their help today. Today we're doing my favorite hymn, and hopefully it's a favorite of many of yours, Blessed Assurance. If anyone had cause to be discouraged and depressed, it was Fanny Crosby. As an infant, she was accidentally blinded by a country doctor's application of a mustard poultice to her eyes. Her father passed away while she was a small child. She married at the age of 38, and her only child died in infancy. After 25 years of marriage, she was widowed and lived the remainder of her life, 32 additional years, alone. Yet this tiny and energetic woman never became bitter or morose. Her spirit was one of joy and enthusiasm, and a little poem she wrote at the age of eight seems to be the theme of her long and fruitful life. Oh, what a happy soul am I, although I cannot see. I am resolved that in this world, contented I will be. How many blessings I enjoy that other people don't. To weep and sigh because I'm blind, I cannot and I won't. Fanny Crosby's resolution to enjoy life and to be appreciative of her many blessings was translated into a full and active life one that would contribute to the religious heritage of the United States in a remarkable and lasting way. As, it immediately obviously, as is immediately obvious from the lovely poem above, Fanny possessed a gift for rhyming at an early age. She also had an acute memory and great gifts of insight and deep concentration. At the age of 15, she was sent to the New York Institute for the Blind, where she learned to read Braille and eventually to teach. After completing her education at the Institute, she served as a member of its faculty for 11 years. During the latter years of her teaching assignment, she met and married Alexander Van Alstein, a blind musician. After leaving the teaching profession, Fanny devoted most of her time to writing popular songs that were set to music by G. F. Root. In 1864, Fanny was introduced to William Bradbury, a pioneer in writing music for American Sunday schools. Bradbury was impressed by Fanny's poetic gifts, and he challenged her to turn her talents to writing Christian songs and hymns. From that time forth, it is reported that she never wrote another secular song, concentrating all her talents and energies on composing verses for gospel singing. She wrote uh, under her own name as well as under over 200 pseudonyms. Her lifetime production of hymns has been estimated to exceed 8,000. It is said that she prayed fervently prior to setting pen to paper and that many of her hymns seem to flow from her mind as fluidly as her conversation. Such it was with the composition of Blessed Assurance. One afternoon in 1873, Fanny was visiting with her good friend, Mrs. Joseph Knapp, the wife of the founder of the Metropolitan Life Insurance Company. Mrs. Knapp was an amateur musician who enjoyed composing melodies. On this occasion, she had a new one she wanted to play for her friend. She played the tune through once and asked Fanny, What does this tune say? Fanny knelt there in the Knapp's parlor 
and Mrs. Knapp played the melody over again. Suddenly, Fanny smiled and rose to her feet, announcing, It says, Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Fanny continued to dictate the verses, and Mrs. Knapp wrote them down, joining them to her melody as we have them today. This was just one of the thousands of hymns Fanny Crosby wrote in her full and fruitful life. Others that might be familiar are Tell Me the Story of Jesus, Praise Him, Praise Him, Draw Me Nearer, Near the Cross, Take the World but Give Me Jesus, To God Be the Glory, Rescue the Perishing, He Hideth My Soul, and Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior. When Fanny Crosby died six weeks before her 95th birthday, she left the world a rich legacy of gospel songs. Throughout the past century, millions of Christians all over the world have been inspired and encouraged by her words. Yet on her tombstone at Bridgeport, Connecticut, there is a simple inscription that sums up her attitude of humility. It is a portion of scripture taken from the remarks of Jesus when he was questioned about the woman at Bethany who had anointed his head with costly perfume. It reads, She hath done what she could. So we'd like to share now the blessed assurance. Particularly the refrain is one that I love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Mary will now join me. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission. Perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight angels descending bring from above echoes of mercy whispers of love this is my story this is my song Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission. All is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. <laughs> 